Hello, this is Tony Riggs with Go Engineer. Now I've got a short little video here showing some advanced techniques that we might use to combine slice files. Well, why would we want to combine slice files? Well, we've got a bottle with a, a top of the bottle and the bottom of the bottle, and we print them all the time, and maybe we want to group them together so we've got one file just into the printer instead of multiple files. That might be one example. So we're going to go through here and green flag this top, figure out the support materials and the tool paths and everything like normal. And we're going to open up the bottom. And we're going to green flag process that as well. If we come in and take a look at the menus once this is done, uh, from the slice pull down, we've actually got this combined slice curve files option. When we do that, it's going to come in and allow us to browse for another slice file. So we can come over and we want to get the, uh, the bottle top. And we can come in and place this somewhere. You know, do we want to place it there? Do we want to place it over here on the other side? Uh, we could come in and say, hey, 1.5 and maybe make this zero so knowing those values is going to help us out we can say okay to that well, that's going to remove the tool paths and that's okay because we're going to regenerate them here in a second but basically we now have both uh, slice files in one file and if we go in and just you know green flag process this file maybe save it as a different name that's the combo of the two files we now have the ability to send this to our printer as one as one unit. Well, another reason why we might want to do that might be come might come from uh, this other example. This may not be the best example, but we'll see. So we've got a part here. It's a fairly large part getting processed on our Fortis 400, so it's a little over 10 and a half inches long. And if we come in and process this with a sparse interior. We'll take a look at the tool paths and see the area that we're going to be talking about. What we might want to do in this center rib area of the part, uh, maybe we need that to be solid for, for strength reasoning. Well, we could go through and create a custom group and make that entire uh, layer range uh, solid, but that's going to also uh, mess up or solidify certain areas of, of the rest of our part. Maybe we don't really need it to be solid out there, just here in the middle of our part. So let's take a look at the, the tool paths here in a second when this gets done. Now we're gonna come over and switch to a, uh, a top view. We're gonna page up and down through this. So it's sparse out here on the left and the right side. If we page up, now we're gonna start seeing the the generation of the support material around the, that center rib. But now, boom, we're back sparse here in the middle. And maybe we would like that to be to be solid. Well, uh, like I said, if we take this whole group uh, layer and, and change that to a solid interior, that'll work. It's going to you know solidify areas where maybe we don't want it to be. So here's a technique that we might use. We're going to come over to our CAD package and maybe play around with, with the geometry a little bit. Uh, what I've done is I've come in and I've created a, a rectangular block here. And we're going to use that here in a little bit uh, to help locate things. But if we come in and maybe hide this body and show this surface, I basically created a surface here to split out the inner area of uh, of our part and we're going to save these two bodies out as one STL file and then we're going to save these two bodies out as a separate STL file process them separately but then combine the slice files and bring in the the solid build center rib here and leave the rest of this geometry as a sparse build once we're done slicing, we can come in and, and, and delete the curves associated with the two uh, rectangles on the left side, and then print our part with a solid interior, but leaving the rest of the geometry 
sparse. So that's just another technique that we can use with our uh, Insight software for combining slice files. And maybe that'll give you a few ideas that you can try uh, just thinking outside the box for, for our toolpath creation. So again, this is Tony Riggs with Go Engineer, and I hope that you found this video um, beneficial.